Hello and welcome back to this course. In the previous session, we have seen how we can configure a GPIO pin as an interrupt source. Now, in this session, we'll talk about interrupt priorities. Okay, so let's start. Let's take an example like if you ever visited any bank, then you must have noticed that in order to manage the customers efficiently, there is a token system implemented by the bank. Customers having the lowest token number will be called first in order to service their request. Similarly, in case of interrupt, the position in the vector table decides the priorities of interrupts. If the position or IRQ number is lower, that means the priority of that interrupt to get served by the processor is higher. Basically, when two or more requests are made simultaneously, the order of the services determined by their priorities. Okay. Now each exception or interrupt has associated an 8-bit priority level resistors, but not all bits are used to set priorities. ARM Cortex MCU has only 16 priority levels, which means that four MSP bits are used to set priorities. These bits can be split into two groups as shown. So here you can see this is the priority resistors. And since MCU has only 16 priority level, so there are only four MSB bits, that is four most significant bits that can be used to set priorities. And these are further divided into two groups. One is known as preemption priority, another one is sub priority and rest of the four bit is not implemented. Now by default, there are two bits for both preemption priority and sub priority. We can also modify the bit allocation as per our requirement. Okay. So you can see right now two bits are for preemption and two bits are of sub priority. So this is the default configuration here. We have four possible combination of preemption priority as well as sub priority. Now, if we use all four bits to store preemption priority, then there will be no bit left for sub priority and vice versa. There will be no bit available for preemption priority when all four bits are used for sub priority. And this process is called priority grouping. So let's see what are the priority groups supported by this ARM Cortex MCU. The combination of preemption priority and sub priority based on the bit allocation is basically called priority grouping. And there are five different groups we can set as shown below. So here you can see this is the table showing the various configuration of priority group. This is the register representation. Here you can see this blue color representation is for preemption priority bits and red one is for the sub priority and green color indicate unused bits. Okay. So here you can see in the table group zero, there is no any bit allocated for preemption priority. All four bits is used for sub priority. Next is group one here. Only one bit is allocated for preemption priority, whereas three bits are used for sub priority. Next is group two. So here both the preemption priority and sub priority have two bits allocation. This is basically the default configuration as we have seen in the previous slide. Group number three. So three bits are used for preemption priority and one bit is used for sub priority. And finally, group four, where four bits are used for preemption priority and there is no any bit available for sub priority. So this is basically the priority grouping and we can use any of the group as per our requirement. Okay. Now let's see what is preemption and sub priority. Generally, there is an inverse relation between the priority number and urgency of the interrupt. That means lower the priority, higher is the urgency of the interrupt. The preempt priority level defines whether an interrupt can be serviced when the processor is already running another interrupt handler. In other words, preempt priority determines if one interrupt can preempt another. That means if one interrupt is being serviced and another interrupt is generated, so their preemption priority will determine either the interrupt being serviced will be stopped or not. Consider the given example where two exception or interrupts are fired with different priority levels. ISR 12 preempted ISR 9 and forced to pend until ISR 12 gets completed. In this figure, what we can see is this is the main program that was being executed and when ISR 9 strike, it just jumped from the main program to the interrupt service routine for external interrupt line number three. During the execution, there is another interrupt that is for DMA one channel two that is having ISR 12. And now 
this ISR 12 has higher preemption priority. So what happened? ISR 9 execution will stop and ISR 12 interrupt service routine will start. Once this gets completed, then ISR 9 will resume. Okay, so you can see like after ISR 12 completed, ISR 9 continues where it left off when ISR 12 preempted it. And after ISR 9 completed, the context is restored to the main program. Okay, this particular depends upon the preemption priority. So here ISR 12 has higher preemption priority as compared to ISR 9. Now, if two exceptions with the same preemption priority levels are triggered, that means the both interrupt, let's say ISR 9 and 12 have same preemption priority, then the order of the service will be decided by the sub priority. Again, lower the sub priority value, higher will be the priority of execution. So I hope the concept of preemption and sub priority is clear. We can use these priority levels when we are implementing multiple interrupts in our code. Okay, so that's all for this session. See you in the next one.